So let's start off with earplugs. And I would say earplugs time, blue in the face. Earplugs, earplugs, earplugs. You will need them. Earplugs will save your life, like save your hearing, save everything about you as a music photographer. If you wanna have longevity in this career, or just, you know, here in general, earplugs are the way to go. Um, there, I cannot tell you how many times when I first started shooting that I got my ears blown out at a show. And there's literally nothing worse than that. Well, quite frankly, actually, the drive home after the show may be worse because your ears are gonna be ringing and it's not gonna be fun. Uh, so just save yourself some time, get yourself some nice earplugs. You can go to Amazon, Walmart, if you're just kind of starting out, want something cheap, those will do the trick. Or, you know, if you see that, you know, it's really becoming a problem and you want something that fits you just right, you can go and get some custom made pair that fit your ear to a T. Um, so yeah, but definitely at some point, invest in earplugs, no matter how much you spend on them, invest in it. It's gonna pay for itself over the course of time. Like, that's a no brainer, in my opinion. Uh, the second thing I think all music photographers need is some sort of camera strap. Uh, there are different types of camera straps. You can do the general neck strap, you can do a wrist strap. Um, I personally have a double camera strap um, and at some point in my career I've used all of them um, and I would highly recommend just getting one that's going to work for you. Um, quite frankly, you know, music shows, festivals, uh, there's so many people there it's just way too easy to bump into someone as you're walking around um, and the last thing you want is to, you know, bump into somebody, hit a lens or bump into somebody and then your camera falls and hits the ground and you're out of a camera. Um, all of those sorts of things are really avoidable with the camera strap. Um, and there are a lot of good options out there, a lot of cool options out there. So definitely check out a camera strap and make sure that you use it consistently. The third thing on my list is a fast writing SD card. Um, when I first started shooting, I was shooting portraits in addition to concerts and shows. Um, but I didn't really see a need for a fast writing SD card or even know the difference between one that was fast and one that was slow. Um, but now that I have kind of progressed and now I'm shooting festivals and things that are just so fast paced, you know, it really does make a difference. I've seen it go from like, you know, maybe getting four out of my six max frames per second to like the full six and really being able to go and chug along as nice as I would like to while I'm shooting and never having to worry about missing like the shot. And I think that really was what made the difference for me. There were a couple times where I was at shows and like, you know, lead singers, they would get in my face and I would like hit that buffer and I'd be like, oh crap, they're in my face, I'm missing the shot. And that's like the worst, the worst thing ever. You never want to miss a shot. You never want to feel like your camera isn't performing at its max capacity. Um, and so that's one recommendation that I think is really slept on in a lot of ways is having a really good SD card that's going to work with how you're shooting. Gear does have its place. So my fourth thing on the list is having a prime lens. Um, your gear is really going to change and evolve as you continue to progress as a photographer or even if you delve into videography more. Just as your needs change, your gear is going to change. But for just starting out, I would definitely recommend having some kind of prime lens. Um, I personally started with the Nifty 50 and that's what I swear by. Um, there are some people, I think like there is no both. Like there is either some people that swear by the Nifty 50 or some people swear by the 35 millimeter, but nobody does both really. Um, I personally recommend the 50. It just works for me when I started off at a crop sensor and I was able to take it to a full frame. It covered what I needed it to cover um, and it's nice and low light, never had any issues. And when I wanted to go wider, I did. Um, and I just feel like there's better lenses out there than just strictly the 35, especially when it talk about, you know, artists getting in your face and getting up close and personal or even getting like super nice wide angle crowd shots. I really feel like there's something better than the 35. Not to bash it, not to bash it. It has its place, but me personally, just do what you feel, do what you feel, but get a prime lens. You'll love it. It's going to be great in the light and it's a really good starting place for when you progress. If you're starting with a crop sensor, when you're going to full frame, you're really going to appreciate that lens down the line and lens just, lenses just hold their value over time. So it's a really good investment into your career. Number five, we are going to talk about full frame cameras. Um, a camera is only as good as a photographer that uses it. But with that being said, there are some differences between using a crop sensor or a micro four thirds and a full frame camera. Um, for starters, I started with a Nikon D7100 when I was shooting concerts, and then I switched over and got a Canon 60, and it was just nowhere near the same. I mean, the quality was just completely different in low light. I could really ramp up the ISO and not be afraid of having a lot of noise in the camera. Um, and they just performed a lot better as far as frames per second, as far as 
you know, being able to get nicer lenses for your full frame bodies. It was just, it was just no competition and there really is a big difference. So definitely, definitely consider investing in a full frame camera for concert photography, for music photography of any kind, um, because you're really going to appreciate it in the long run. Uh, so these are just my things that, you know, I feel like all music photographers should have after being in one, seeing shows, shooting shows, um, and just kind of seeing what's worked for me and what's worked for other people around me. Um, and I think you'll really appreciate them in the long run. These are things that you won't really want to replace or have to replace as you continue to go on throughout your career. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, take a second to like it. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you're too busy to do either of those things, take a minute to watch a couple other videos in this playlist. I think you'll really like them. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.